Hundreds without homes tonight, but thankful to be alive, while others are haunted by mass devastation carved across the South and lives taken too soon. Saved by the howl of sirens right ahead of the Roaring Twisters. A look at those systems in place as we brace for another bout of severe weather. No severe storms in our area and even across northern third Alabama, which is under a tornado watch. We're tracking the latest for you coming up right here on Evening Edition. Covering western Georgia and east Alabama, this is News 3 Evening Edition. Thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Teresa Whitaker. And I'm Phil Scoggins. Daylight today brought a clearer look at images across Georgia and Alabama we had rather not seen. These are aerial pictures out of Troop County earlier today. The area got pummeled not once, but twice yesterday by an outbreak of severe storms. Weather officials confirmed that the first round did in fact spawn an EF2 tornado. And during last night's second round of storms, another tornado ripped through Jefferson County, Alabama and leveled the fire department in Kimberly. A church in the area was also hit hard. And you're looking at perhaps some of the worst damage seen in Alabama. This is what's left of a neighborhood in Athens. At least two deaths were confirmed in a mobile home park just outside the city. Other deaths were reported but have not been confirmed. Closer to home, Lee County also hit hard by the early morning outbreak. Salem in particular saw some of the area's worst damage. News 3's Dane Young has been there all day talking with victims. He joins us live now. Dane. Out of all the sites with the tornado damage that we've seen here in East Alabama today, this is one of the most incredible images. The fact that this camper, and you'll see where it was, is now on its side. The wind picked it up and moved it to this spot. It was over here on the concrete uh, last night. It's a story that now belongs to Harold Britt. Neighbors in the Johnson's Place subdivision sifted through what was left of their homes after the tornado cut a destruction. Harold Britt has seen plenty of tornadoes come near, but he has never experienced what he went through this morning. My wife had just got out of bed, come back in there, yelled at us. We got up, and by the time I got up and got in the hallway, it was here. And we stood in the hallway in there. As the sounds magnified, Britt says he held tight to his family. We just laid in the floor in the hallway and prayed for the best. He says the noise was something he'll never forget. It, it was pretty loud and the house started shaking. Were you scared? Oh yeah, my daughter was crying. When the storm was over, Britt and his family walked outside to see his camper not where he parked it. The storm had left it on top of his truck. He thinks the camper was scooped up by very strong winds. Yeah, it was hitting the house, but I think that camper kept made it shot up over the house. If you want to know the truth, I think that's what it was. Really? Yeah, but look at my neighbor's house. Roof's gone on it. His front porch is completely gone. His backyard is also a picture of the power of the morning storms. His first reaction was to be upset over all the lost property, but he says his wife put everything into perspective. Uh, we're alive. That's the main thing. Not my wife kept telling me, don't worry about it. You can replace this. We're alive. That's the main thing. Some good news for Mr. Britt and his family. He did tell us that the insurance adjusters have already been here to check out the damage and that uh, this camper will be back on its side after uh, tow companies move it back on its side in a couple of days, though it is total. Reporting live in Salem, Dane Young, WRBL News 3, on your side. All right, thanks, Dane. Britt says emergency responders showed up to his neighborhood quickly. He says he saw at least nine response crews near his house checking on people and beginning to clear the roads. Now, as many across the area start to pick up the pieces, we're tracking yet another line of storms. Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald in the First Alert Weather Center right now with the latest, Bob. And uh, as far as them being long-lived, at least some of these are severe thunderstorms. We haven't been seeing the tornadoes like we did yesterday, especially across Mississippi. However, there's still an area that at least is conducive for development for severe thunderstorms producing tornadoes across a good chunk of Mississippi and at least the northern and northwest portion of Alabama. And this is still far off to our west. What's ahead of it is a lot of rain and showers and storms. So let's get right in our first alert forecast tracker a little earlier tonight, something different. Coming up at 6-5 Central here in this hour, we're looking at those storms to our south. We're also looking off to the west. Let's uh, walk you ahead and show you what we're talking about. Get ahead to about 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. We will be seeing an advancing area 
of some showers and in some embedded thunderstorms lifting in from the south and west. A little different in terms of how these are developing from uh, last night's or this morning storms. And in fact, these will be coming up in the form of some isolated moderate to heavy rain, maybe even a few thunderstorms. We're not looking at these being coming severe just yet. Now off to the north and west, different story. This is north and west of Chambers County, where some of those are what we call rotating type thunderstorms, it appears to be. And the guidance model does a good job coming up around midnight. And it's worth watching for our northwest viewers to start off with, Phil. And then we'll track ahead. And when we get a system that's right on top of us, we can go minute by minute with our, our latest technology. So you don't want to miss that, too. So we're right here for you until this whole storm system passes on demand and right here on News 3. Back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. The Crawford area of Lee County also ravaged by a tornado this morning. News 3's Christian Campbell has a look at the damage left behind in one Crawford neighborhood. Neighbors in the Johnson's Place subdivision sifted through what was left of their homes after the tornado cut a destructive path through their community early Tuesday morning. 12-year-old Edward Payne says it was the most terrifying thing he had ever experienced. I was trembling. That's all I could say about it. Just one word, trembling. So scared. Never been in a tornado in my life before. Janet Johnson has been in this spot before. She also survived a twister 20 years ago. Although her home was spared, she was still sad because two of her family members lost their home only one block away. I have a brother-in-law. His house is totally demolished. I have another brother-in-law who has sustained substantial damage to his house. The storm brought neighbors together. Strangers from other communities brought food, water, and other essential items for the victims. Through it all, Johnson and Payne said it was their faith that kept them secure. Praying in the bathroom, thinking, asking Jesus for protection over our house, and that was the big thing that got us through it. That was News 3's Christian Campbell reporting residents in Crawford also preparing for what they heard will be a second round of storms coming up later tonight and in the morning. Many residents have told News 3 that regardless of what it is to come in that neighborhood for their whole state, is that for that matter, their faith will still not be shaken. We now turn to Georgia where one Pine Mountain community saw mobile homes tossed by high winds and even struck by lightning. News 3's David Hurst joins us live from the aftermath of yet another apparent tornado. David. Teresa, not much left remaining in this mobile home, as you can see. Looks like just about the steps are the only thing that's remaining as they lead up to the doorway. Just everything else was just destroyed in the fire this morning after the mobile home was struck by lightning. I spoke with a victim's cousin a little while ago. She says no one was injured. There was only one person living in the home at the time. He made it out safely, but as you can see, he lost just about everything. Uh, the victim's cousin tells me that he's lucky to be alive. She says he woke up and got out of the house just in time. It was some fire coming from the refrigerator. He, it popped and woke him up. And said so when he went to try to put it out, the fire was so extreme that he couldn't put it out. And by the time he got out the door, the, fire, the, the, the mobile home just blew up in flames. The man is staying down the road in a hotel and Red Cross volunteers were out here earlier to help. The victim's cousin tells me that he is recovering, he's doing all right. But this scene right here just shows the seriousness of the storm this morning. But luckily, again, no one was hurt. He did lose everything. However, the man has a lot of friends, a lot of family in the community that have rallied around him and showed him support. We're reporting live in Pine Mountain. David Hurst, WRBL News 3, on your side. Thank you, David. If you didn't hear the winds of a tornado this morning, you likely heard booming thunder and the howling sirens. But some tell News 3 they weren't exactly sure what to do when they heard the sirens going off in their neighborhood. As News 3's Naomi Kidd explains, they're specifically designed to help keep you safe ahead of the storm. Phil, the Polygon warning siren system works like this. When emergency officials get information about severe weather, like the severe storms that tore across East Alabama this morning, they're able to signal specific sirens. In Russell County, only people who are directly affected by the path of a storm will hear the warning siren in their area. Russell County EMA Director Bob Franklin tells me it encourages people to take these sirens seriously. If you hear our sirens going off, it's, it's time to, to seek that safe place. It means that you are in the path of that tornado. And as we saw this morning, those things are really destructive. The, the destruction that's happened uh, across a portion of Russell County and into Lee County is just unbelievable. 
Here in Muskogee County, there are 47 outdoor emergency warning sirens. The sirens issue six separate warning tones and can also make voice announcements. Franklin also encourages people to get a weather radio to alert you of severe conditions while you sleep. In the studio, Naomi Kitt, WRBL News 3, on your side. Thank you so much, Naomi. And speaking of weather radios, Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswal is uh, going to have details about how you can access one by entering a contest later on in this newscast. Meanwhile, the storm's not the only big story of the morning. Outside Atlanta, six people wounded in a shooting rampage. What else authorities now say the shooter was armed with next. And a massive tornado caught on camera in Mississippi, the latest on Jason, the toll that it took the in plan? that area coming up. Okay, so where are we? When is this going to finally end? It's still going to hang around. We're talking for more than 12 hours, maybe another 18 hours left of this. That's coming up in your full weather, so stay with us. For 37 years, Energy Savers has provided indoor comfort for homeowners in the Chattahoochee Valley. When Dad opened in February of 77, his goal was to provide customers with an energy efficient home comfort system and deliver the best customer service after the sale. In reaching these goals, we have grown to be the largest HVAC service and installation company in the Valley area. Whether it's for a new carrier system or simply to provide maintenance and repair for your present system, we're here to help. Give us a call and see what good hometown customer service feels like. My name is Melissa. These are my kids, and we are not actors. We really did get hurt, and Ken Nugent really did help us. Have you had an accident here in the Columbus area? Are you hurt? I help injured people here every day, and I can help you too. Let's get started right now. Pick up the phone and tell me what happened to you. Calling Ken was a really good choice for my family and me. Ken got all our medical bills paid, and we had money left over for me and my family. Call me. One call, that's all. Call 1-800-CALL-KEN. A Chambers County man out on bond tonight after authorities say he killed his stepson before taking, trying to take his own life. Officials say that 58-year-old Steve Sorrells turned himself in yesterday. Sorrells is accused of shooting 29-year-old Patrick Duffy to death before shooting himself in the head. It happened earlier this month on County Road 177. Authorities tell News 3 a female relative was also inside the house at the time, but that no one else is being charged in that incident. A shooting spree in Georgia leaves three hurt and three others fighting for their lives. It happened earlier today at a FedEx facility in Kennesaw. We're now learning that the shooter was not only armed with a gun, but also with Molotov cocktails. Officials won't say how many of the explosive devices were found. And I heard the clink. I heard it, something drop on the floor and I looked to my left, saw a knife laying on the ground. And I don't know if he was going to pick it up, but as soon as I saw what he's wearing and everything, I ran the other way. The worker says he was wearing black and camo. Authorities say the gunman took his own life. Alabama Governor Robert Bentley now seeking an emergency declaration from FEMA following yesterday's deadly storms that killed three. The governor says damage was reported in 19 counties, the worst coming in Limestone, Jefferson, Walker, and Tuscaloosa counties. Bentley says 65 community safe rooms were built with federal funds following the deadly tornadoes back in 2011. Those safe rooms were used Monday night to help keep people out of harm's way. And we are apparently not out of the woods yet when it comes to severe weather. That's right. And if we start talking about the overnight early tomorrow morning, that's what we're focused on again. Even some rumbles of thunder tonight doesn't mean we can't have a sporadic pop-up that could be strong to severe. And that's what we're going to be talking about in full weather. Here's the latest look at the satellite and radar. I even have a weather radio keyword coming up for you so you can participate in our contest. That's coming up right after the break. This is Jim, a man who doesn't stand still. But Jim has AFib, atrial fibrillation, and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. That puts Jim at a greater risk of stroke. For years, Jim's medicine tied him to a monthly trip to the clinic to get his blood tested. But now, with once a day Xarelto, Jim's on the move. Jim's doctor recommended Xarelto. Like warfarin, Xarelto was proven effective to reduce AFib-related stroke risk. 
but Xarelto is the first and only once-a-day prescription blood thinner for patients with AFib not caused by a heart valve problem that doesn't require routine blood monitoring. So Jim's not tied to that monitoring routine. Proceed to the designated route. Uh, today. For patients currently well-managed on warfarin, there is limited information on how Xarelto and warfarin compare in reducing the risk of stroke. Xarelto is just one pill a day taken with the evening meal. Plus, with no known dietary restrictions, Jim can eat the healthy foods he likes. Do not stop taking Xarelto Reveroxaban without talking to the doctor who prescribes it, as this may increase the risk of having a stroke. Get help right away if you develop any symptoms like bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling. You may have a higher risk of bleeding if you take Xarelto with aspirin products, NSAIDs, or blood thinners. Talk to your doctor before taking Xarelto if you have abnormal bleeding. Xarelto can cause bleeding, which can be serious and rarely may lead to death. You are likely to bruise more easily on Xarelto, and it may take longer for bleeding to stop. Tell your doctors you are taking Xarelto before any planned medical or dental procedures. Before starting Xarelto, tell your doctor about any conditions, such as kidney, liver, or bleeding problems. Xarelto is not for patients with artificial heart valves. Jim changed his routine. Ask your doctor about Xarelto. Once a day, Xarelto means no regular blood monitoring, no known dietary restrictions. For more information and savings options, call 1-888-Xarelto or visit GoZarelto.com. Up to the Minute Weather Radar, brought to you by the Georgia Lottery. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. Here's a look at conditions in Louisville, Mississippi, as tornadoes rip through that area on Monday. You can see debris swirling in the air as this person drove through the storm. Severe weather claimed the lives of at least eight people in Mississippi on Monday. Another powerful storm system is expected to impact the Midwest, South, and East Coast into Wednesday. Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald is tracking that line. Now, News 3 brings you your first alert forecast. And it's hard to believe right now, it's like the calm before the storm, but there's another line we are tracking right now. And you can see 70 degrees out there will take you to Auburn University, where it's rather stable. Uh, the dew points at 64 degrees, getting close to 68. It's getting a little, little ripe out there, a lot of humidity. And when you see that number close to the actual air temperature, you start getting a little point of more moisture in the atmosphere, which is some fuel that's needed if you get a little ripple of energy coming across the atmosphere. The winds are from the south southeast right now, and we're going to see some changes coming up tracking these storms right now to our south and west. Now these are nothing like what we had this morning that produced the Salem tornado and uh, with the technology that we have now you can even see the debris field and that's why the National Weather Service last night um, was able to call immediately and as we were tracking it meteorologist David Reese and Kurt Schmitz were all in here looking at the actual dynamics and saw the signature that show us a rotation of that Salem and as a matter of fact social media you can count on us even on Facebook David Reese was informing people minutes before that tornado actually was sounded as a an actual warning. So uh, the first alert weather team is on your side. The front is still to the west of Mississippi. Right along that front is where the tornado watch is. So it's a good likelihood as we get into later in this forecast period that it will be advancing farther east. Uh, just keep that in mind, but not in the short term forecast. This rumbles of thunder coming up here. Severe storms are well to the south along Interstate 10 in the western Panhandle, Florida. The reason why we're looking at this and focused on it is that how much of this will help to cool or stable the air before the round of storms off to the west kind of converge in here. So that could actually be a benefit to us, albeit there could be a still a few strong storms to our southwest counties, meaning thunderstorms. We're not talking tornadoes with this just yet, okay? So uh, that's the good news, but some of these will be strong enough to produce some damaging wind. And you could see the flux of moisture coming in here. So our round is coming in from the south and, and uh, west, lifting towards the north and east towards Columbus. So rain is knocking on our door if you're in places like Tuskegee and back across western Russell County, Union Springs, and eventually into Phoenix City. So there's a big picture. You can see how this encompasses a big chunk of the south and east. And now we're going to take you a little bit farther out in the first alert forecast tracker as we look ahead 
ahead here. You can see how this is starting to lift in here. Remember, this is a guidance model. It's not pure science, but we can analyze it enough to track at least hour by hour here for you as we jump ahead around midnight with still some areas of activity, isolated showers and thunderstorms, which they could produce some strong winds. This is a line by tomorrow morning we're probably most concerned with by virtue of how this front's coming in here could start to rotate a couple isolated thunderstorms along that line. That's critical to note. So early tomorrow morning, we'll be going minute by minute, giving you the latest analysis. Tonight, 69, rain and thunderstorms picking up. They'll be rather disorganized, scattered, more uniform, more of a line coming in at 7 a.m. That will be something we need to watch. With temperatures in the 70s and slightly cooler behind it, we set the stage with a much better forecast ahead. Check this out on your three-day. More storms for Wednesday up at least till noon and early afternoon, and then we clear out. May mention a slight chance of pop-up shower Friday, but not a spoiler this weekend. We're talking mid-70s. Everything is looking pretty good, but I'll tell you, David, I'll be this a late season for tornadoes to develop. You got to remember that when they do, we got to keep a watchful eye and it's happened before in the past, hasn't it? Oh, it most certainly has, Bob. In fact, back in February of 2008 or excuse me, 2009, February 28th, 2009, we saw that Salem tornado kind of rumble just to the northwest of where the tornado hit earlier this morning. So. Areas in and around Columbus, Phoenix City, Auburn, and Opelika do indeed get hit by tornadoes. And in fact, the next morning when people were waking up in Salem, they saw quite a bit of snow. Then taking a look at Pine Mountain Valley, April 27, 2011. That's another storm that we were tracking all night long. And let's go ahead and show you that picture. Pine Mountain Valley really impacted FDR State Park. And then as we tracked it into Upson County, it kind of fizzled out. And then as we talk about November 16th, 2012, that's more recent for a lot of us. That was also an EF2 tornado. And that started all the way in Nautosoga, ended in the Hamilton. It cut across the southern part of Auburn University, damaged some of the Auburn High's baseball facilities, then rolled toward Lake Harding. And here's one of the images from Lake Harding. And then from there, and went all the way over towards Hamilton, damaging parts of Harris County High School before ripping off the roof of the 911 call center and damaging parts of the jail. So Bob, Phil, and Teresa, it just goes to show that we do see tornadoes here in our viewing area. Those are just a few examples, and I'm sure you guys have a few more for us, too. Yeah, March 1st of 2009, that snow the next day. That's how violent these storms, when you have that kind of disparity in air masses, it was so energized that we had tornadoes that the, the last day of February of 2009, and then the first day we woke up that Saturday morning was snow, snow galore. I mean, it was like a big, we had big little pressure. That would have canceled sports for Jonathan that day. <laughs> we had snow sports or something. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Well, Sports Director Jonathan Husky now, so much for those uh, playoff schedules, huh? Mother Nature wreaking havoc. Yeah, huh? speaking of canceling schedules, yeah, teams having to scramble to fit the games in. I've got the updated schedule for the next week coming up, plus some of college football's best coaches teed it up for the second day of the Chick-fil-A Challenge. Find out how they shot next in 3 on Your Side Sports. Every day, thousands of men and women come together to bring you the wonder that is electricity. Affordably and reliably and with a belief that in the right hands, this energy can do a whole lot more than just make the lights come on. It can make an entire state Shine. Alabama Power. Power to Alabama. We are gathered here today to honor the loss of a family member who served us well. Does anyone have any words? It's sad we've lost our old air conditioner. But we can celebrate our new carrier Green Speed system. Thanks to Green Speed Intelligence, it's the most efficient heat pump you can buy. And we love the remote access. For a carrier Green Speed, turn to the experts at Sam Hewitt Services, your hometown's best choice, and save up to $1,450 in factory rebates. Sam Hewitt Services. If you have questions about your social security benefits, visit ForThePeople.com or call Morgan & Morgan for the people. This is a head-to-head -head challenge. We want to find out which vehicle you prefer. Floor it. Okay. This is awesome. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow, a lot more pickup than the Honda. The Fusion does not feel like a four-cylinder. Is that because of the EcoBoost? 
That's with the Fusion. It just has a younger vibe to me. The winner is Ford Fusion, hands down. See for yourself during the EcoBoost Challenge. Now get a Fusion with zero for 60 plus a thousand bonus cash or get up to 3,000 cash back at your local Ford dealer. People are stuck in very old habits of using toothpaste to clean a denture, but dentures are very different to real teeth. They're about 10 times softer and may have surface pores where bacteria can grow and multiply. Polydent is specifically designed to clean dentures daily. Its unique microclean formula kills 99.99% of odor-causing bacteria and helps dissolve stains, cleaning in a better way than brushing with toothpaste. That's why dentists recommend Polydent. Polydent, cleaner, fresher, brighter every day. Jeopardy! Weeknights at 7, 6 Central on WRVL. Time for News 3 Sports. This is 3 on your side sports. I'm Jonathan Husky. The tragedy of the storms that tore across our neighborhood last night and this morning have reached the world of sport. A University of Alabama swimmer John Cervati died last night from injuries he suffered as the storm swept through Tuscaloosa. Cervati died a hero. He held up a concrete retaining wall long enough to allow his girlfriend to escape before it collapsed again. Cervati was 21 years old and a native of Tupelo, Mississippi. He was a business major and three-time member of the SEC Academic Honor Roll and a scorer at the SEC Championships. Alabama coach Dennis Persley said, quote, he will forever be in our hearts and a part of the Crimson Tide legacy. Now to the games on the field. The weather has forced numerous scheduled changes. Northside boys soccer has been postponed from tonight to Friday night at 5 at Glen Academy. Hardaway boys will host Ware County. No word yet on that makeup though. The Columbus boys soccer team will travel to Southeast Whitfield now on Saturday at 7. In baseball, Glenwood State semifinal series with Monroe has been moved from tomorrow to Thursday. Game one at 2.30 p.m. The 6A Area 5 softball tournament is held at Central. Scheduled to start tomorrow, it will now begin on Thursday. And the top-ranked Chattahoochee Valley Pirates will now host Southern Union, tentatively scheduled for tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. Gus Malzahn and other of college football's top coaches got another nine holes in today to finish the 2014 Chick-fil-A Bowl Challenge. Problem was, they were chasing Georgia Tech's Paul Johnson playing with John Barry. The Yellow Jacket team cruised to a four-shot victory, their third in four years. Malzahn and Bo Jackson finished tied for fifth at seven under. Also tied for fifth, Nick Saban and Mark Ingram. First of a trio of signings this week at Brookstone School. Senior soccer star Rachel Moore signed this morning to play at Georgia Southern. She's been playing soccer since she was four years old, was team captain for the Lady Cougars the past two years. In those two years, she's totaled 52 goals and 16 assists. By my math, that's a lot. Congratulations <laughs> to her. Absolutely. Thank you, Jonathan. Yep. A final check of your forecast when we come back. Don't go far. A name is more than a word. It is the sound you answer to your mark on the world. Today, TIC proudly introduces a new name, Kinetic Credit Union, a name that reflects our heritage and refines our future. Our new name is our pledge to continue giving banking a good name. Welcome to Kinetic Credit Union. This is Energized Banking. First place in the science fair, so proud of my little girl. Hi, guys. What does that do? Show her, sweetie. When you love seafood this much... A perfect 30% sauce to shrimp ratio. It sure is. It's got to be D's. That's my girl. Our Cajun fish tenders are back. Bold in flavor with a touch of spice. Also, try our southern style fish tenders or the sampler. For full meals at just $4.99, it's got to be D's. If I could get it just oh. a second. Let's make pinwheels. OK. Let's see, what do we need? Oh, Bill, the baby's kicking. I can feel it. I know. Can the baby hear me? I think so. You know, when you were restless in there, I used to sing to you. Did it work? <laughs> Sometimes. One thing always worked, though. I used to tell you secrets. Do you want to tell her a secret? What would I say? You could just tell her something about yourself. Well, maybe. Well, you could tell her what a great soccer player you are. Help me. <laughs> Hold it here. And... <gasps> it's a pinwheel. It's a pinwheel. We made it. <laughs> Why don't you tell her what a great sister you'll be? You're really going to love Mom. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. 
I had such a great time at Camp Joy last summer, and I sure hope I can go again this year. We swam and played lots of fun games and went for hikes in the woods. We had Bible studies every day, and I learned a lot about God that I didn't know before. My mom is a single parent, and we don't have any extra money in my house. I never thought I'd be able to go to camp, but Camp Joy is free. Some very nice person I don't even know paid for me to go. I want to say a big thank you for that and let you know kids like me really appreciate it. WRBL.com, on your side 24-7. Your first alert weather team. On the air, on the web, on your side. Just can't take our eyes off the radar. No, we can't. I mean, it's getting a good workout, that's for sure. A round of showers, these are not severe, just to, to keep you at rest. Just be informed, and the first alert weather team's on your side on social media, and of course your, your radar apps and much more. But this is nothing to be concerned about. Just some showers, and we'll even see some embedded thunder. Okay, what's coming up at 1110 Central tonight? Uh, something fun, too. We're going to talk about that. We are talking about this. Um, we're going to give away our next radio, radio. That's our Enter to Win contest continues. Local emergency alerts is uh, contained on this weather alert radio and much more. The keyword is sandwich. Good luck. 1110 Central. We'll see you then. All right. Thanks, Bob. That's going to do it for Evening Edition. Have a safe and pleasant evening. Tonight, the death penalty in the NBA. I am banning Mr. Sterling for life. The NBA commissioner takes the most extreme action possible against the extreme remarks of a team owner. Carter Evans is on the story, and we'll talk to James Brown of CBS Sports. More than 100 tornadoes reported since Sunday. The South and Midwest count the dead and the damage. Vicente Arenas and Dean Reynolds report. A heavily armed teenager shoots six people at a FedEx facility in Georgia. Mark Strassman is there. He had an uh, assault rifle. He had bullets strapped to his chest like Rambo. And if you're stopped by the police, can they search your cell phone? Jan Crawford on the case before the Supreme Court today. This is the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. Good evening. The new commissioner of the National Basketball Association chose the nuclear option. Today, Adam Silver banned Los Angeles Clippers owner Donald Sterling for life and urged the rest of the NBA owners to force him to sell his team. It is punishment for racist comments the 80-year-old Sterling admits that he made, comments condemned by President Obama as, quote, incredibly offensive. Here is Commissioner Silver this afternoon in New York. Mr. Sterling may not attend any NBA games or practices. He may not be present at any Clippers facility and he may not participate in any business or player personnel decisions involving the team. And Commissioner Silver said this about the ownership of Sterling's half billion dollar team. I will urge the Board of Governors to exercise its authority to force a sale of the team and will do everything in my power to ensure that that happens. Silver would have to persuade three quarters of the NBA's owners to give Sterling the boot. Silver also fined the billionaire two and a half million dollars, the maximum allowed by the NBA Constitution. The money is to go to organizations that fight the kind of intolerance that Sterling expressed on an audio recording made public over the weekend. This is Sterling speaking to his girlfriend. Yeah, it bothers me a lot that you want to broadcast that you're associating with black people. Commissioner Silver had a message for current and former NBA players and coaches and the fans. To them and pioneers of the game, like Earl Lloyd, Chuck Cooper, Sweetwater Clifton, the great Bill Russell, and particularly Magic Johnson, I apologize. But what about an apology from Donald Sterling? Mr. Sterling acknowledged it was his voice on the tape, and he has not expressed to me directly any other views. Reaction was swift and seemed nearly unanimous. Carter Evans is in Los Angeles, where the Clippers have a playoff game tonight. NBA players and politicians watched the announcement from Los Angeles City Hall, and they got what they wanted. This is a defining moment in our history. 
Former NBA All-Star Kevin Johnson is now an advisor for the National Basketball Players Association. Today stands as one of those great moments where sports once again transcends, where sports provides a place for fundamental change on how our country should think and act. But if NBA Commissioner Adam Silver had not acted swiftly to punish Donald Sterling for his racist remarks, the players were prepared to make a move. Roger Mason is vice president of the Players Association. I reached out to other players around the league and made it clear that the players were ready to boycott the games. They're now demanding an immediate vote from team owners to oust Donald Sterling. Do you believe the Board of Governors will have enough support to force the sale of the team? Man, I haven't heard one, one owner not support uh, Sterling selling his team in the media, and I can't see. I know a lot of the owners personally from spending time during negotiations. Um, I would be shocked if it wasn't unanimous. Reaction on social media was immediate. Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban wrote, I agree 100% with Commissioner Silver's findings. Magic Johnson said Commissioner Silver showed great leadership in banning L.A. Clippers owner for life. And LeBron James said, thank you for protecting our beautiful and powerful league. In a statement, the Clippers said, now the healing begins. Their website's homepage changed to show only a team logo with the words, we are one. Protesters are planning a rally here at Staples Center tonight before the Clippers take the court. But Scott, the tone of that protest is changing right now to support the team and encourage team owners to vote out Donald Sterling. Carter, thanks very much. So will the owners vote Sterling out? We called the other 29 NBA teams today. Most of them wouldn't comment yet, but the Houston Rockets, Sacramento Kings, and Chicago Bulls told us that they support forcing Sterling to sell. James Brown of CBS Sports is a special correspondent for CBS News. JB, does Silver have the support of the rest of the owners? He made it clear himself, Adam Silver, that he had not talked to all of the owners, but as in any other organization, he talked to the key owners who support and influence he can